If a heavier person wants to strike me in the face, it would be very naive and counterproductive to stop his blow. The Chinese and Japanese judo art tells us what to do. First to avoid the strike, then to grab the fist and continue his movement in the direction where it was before, right? Until the enemy crashes in the wall. You see? So, what happens here? The target country obviously does something wrong. If it's a free democratic society, there are many different movements within the society. There are obviously, in every society, there are people who are against the society. They may be simple criminals, ideologically in disagreement with the, with the state policy, conscientious enemies, simply psychotic personalities who are against anything. Right? And finally, there are a small group of agents of a foreign nation bought, subverted, recruited, right? The moment all these movements will be directed in one direction, right? This is the time to catch that movement and to continue it until the movement forces the whole society into collapse, into crisis, right? So that's exactly the martial art tactic. We don't stop an enemy. We let him go. We help him to go in the direction we want them to go. Okay? So, on the stage of demoralization, obviously there are tendencies in each society, in each country, which are going to opposite direction from the basic moral values and principles. To take advantage of these movements, to capitalize on them, is the main purpose of the originator of subversion. So we have religion, we have education, we have uh, social life, we have power structure, we have labor relations, uh, unions, and finally we have law and order. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? These are the areas of application of subversion. What it means exactly, <clears throat> in case of religion, destroy it, ridicule it. Replace it with various sects, cults, which bring people's attention, faith, whether it is naive, primitive, doesn't really matter. As long as the basically accepted religious dogma is being slowly eroded and taken away from the supreme purpose of religion, to keep people in touch with, with the supreme being, that serves the purpose. Therefore, replace it, accept it respected religious organizations with fake organizations. Distract people's attention from the real faith and attract them to various different faiths. Education. Distract them from learning something which is constructive, pragmatic, efficient. Instead of mathematics, physics, foreign languages, chemistry, teach them history of urban warfare, natural food, uh, <laughs> home economy, your sexuality, anything, as long as it takes you away. Okay? Uh, social life. Replace traditionally established institutions and organizations with fake organizations. Take away the initiative from people. Take away the responsibility from naturally established links between individuals, group of individuals, and society at large, and replace them with artificially, bureaucratically controlled bodies. Instead of social life and friendship between neighbors, establish social workers' institutions. The people who are on payroll of whom? Society? No. Bureaucracy. The main concern of social workers is not your family, not you, not social relations between groups of people. The main concern is to get the paycheck from the government. What will be the result of their social work doesn't really matter. They can develop all kinds of concepts to show them, to show to the government and to the people that they're useful. Okay. Away from the natural links. Power structure. Okay. The natural bodies of administration, which are 
traditionally either elected by by people at large or appointed by elected leaders of society are being actively substituted by artificial bodies the bodies of people groups of people whom nobody elected never as a matter of fact most of the people don't like them at all and yet they exist one of such group is media who elected them <laughs> how come how come they they face they, they they have so much power almost monopolistic power on your mind they can rape your mind but who elected them how come they are they have a nerve to decide what is good and what is bad for for the elected by you president and and his administration who the hell are they uh spiro agnew who was hated by the liberal left called them a bunch of enfeebled snobs and that's exactly what they are they think they know they don't the, the level of mediocrity in a big establishment like new york times los angeles times major television network you don't have to be excellent journalist you have to be exactly a mediocre journalist that's easier to survive there's no competition anymore you have your good nice income one hundred thousand dollars a year that's it whether you're better or worse doesn't really matter anymore as soon as you're smiling to the camera and do your job that's it no more no more competition power structure slowly uh, is eroded by the bodies and groups of people who do not have neither qualification nor the will of people to keep them in power and yet they do have power Okay. Together with that, there is another process. Law enforcement, law and order uh, organization and structure is being eroded. For the last 20, 25 years, you, you, if, if you see old movies and new movies, you can see that in new movies, a policeman, an officer of the United States Army looks dumb, angry, psychotic, paranoid. A criminal looks nice, kind of, well, he smokes hash and, and shoots the uh, whatever drug, but basically he's a nice human being. He's creative, and he's unproductive only because society oppresses him. Whereby a general of Pentagon is always, by definition, a dumb, a war maniac. A policeman is a pig, rude policeman. He abuses his power. You no, know? a generality, generalization like that. The hatred, the mistrust to the people who are supposed to protect you and enforce law and order. Moral relativity. The Angela Buona process lasted two years in Los Angeles. Relativity. The Angela Buona process lasted two years in Los Angeles. And yet there are still some lawyers who say, look, he's a nice character, as a matter of fact. There was some witness who said, also a criminal, who said, well, he's a nice guy. I asked him one day to burn a house of my enemy, and he wouldn't do it. <laughs> nice fellow. A revolution. <laughs> a slow substitution of basic moral principles, whereby a criminal is not a criminal, actually. He's a defendant, even if his guilt is proven. There is still a doubt. To kill or not to kill, to be or not to be, I shall not kill, yes. But this uh, line may not necessarily be applicable to a murderer. I shall not murder, that should be the, the, the presumption, not, not that I shall not kill. Okay, labor relations. At this stage, within 15 to 20 years, we destroy the traditionally established links of bargaining between employer and employee. The classical Marxist-Leninist uh, theory of natural exchange of goods. Uh, a person A has five sacks of grain and person B has five pairs of shoes. And the natural exchange without money is when they bargain between each other. And only with the introduction of the third force, C, uh, an entirely third foreign stranger who says, no, don't give him five sacks of grain, give it to me. 
and you give me your five pairs of shoes, and I will distribute it accordingly, so that the economy will go. This is the death of natural exchange, and death, death of natural bargaining. Well, trade unions were established 100 years ago. The objective was to improve working conditions and to protect the rights of workers from those employers who were abusing their, their right because they had more money. Objectively, at that time, initially, the trade union movement did work. What we see now is that the bargaining pro process is no longer resulting into, in the compromise, which is leading objectively to betterment of working conditions and increase of salary. What we see is that after each prolonged strike, the workers lose. Even if they have 10% increase of their salaries, they cannot catch up due to inflation and due to missed time. More than that, millions of people suffer from that strike because the economy now is interdependent. It's intertwined like one body. If previously uh, steel workers, say 100 years ago, could strike and nobody would suffer, now it's impossible anymore. If a garbage collector strikes today, the rest of the multi-million city is stinking. I mean, the, the, there's no more service. Uh, in Quebec, for example, we had the electricians who were on strike in the middle of winter. You can freeze your bottom, and they still were on strike. Did they catch up with the salary? No, they lost. Who benefited? The leaders of trade union. What is the motivation for strike? Improving, improving of wor uh, a worker's condition? No. Obviously, it's not. Then what is it? Ideology. To prove to these capitalists. And the obedient horde of workers, like sheep, follow these people. And they cannot disobey. Why? Because if they do, you know what happens to them. Pickets. Murders. Shooting truck drivers by picketers. In Montreal, for example, I saw with my own eyes, when I was correspondent of CBC International, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. When the workers of aircraft factory destroyed computers and, and, and the equipment in the factory, and they, the, the administration employed strike breakers, their cars were turned upside down and burned. Their houses were burned, their kids were intimidated, and some victims were there. Of that you can be sure. Why? To improve conditions of workers? No. Ideology. Okay, so this is what happens, basically. It may or may not happen without the help of the Soviet Union, but the natural tendencies are being greatly taken advantage of and capitalized by the Soviet propaganda systems. How? Whenever trade union strikes, we have influx of propaganda, mass media, ideological dissemination, the workers' right. And we repeat it like parrots. Yes, workers' rights. Whose rights? Workers? No. The, the only freedom of worker to sell his labor according to his own desire and will is taken away from him. By whom? By trade union boss. 